Hi, everybody. This is Congress Member uh, Nanette Barragan. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our virtual jobs fair. Super excited about today um, with our special guest, uh, Rancho Dominguez, America's Job Center of California. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm in Southern California. It's nice and warm out, uh, but I just got to remind you all to stay in, make sure you're washing your hands and you're uh, wearing your mask. Um, when, every year, uh, my office plans a jobs fair where most, where, where we host hundreds of job seekers and try to connect them with employers. Um, the current public health crisis, of course, makes in-person jobs fair this year impossible. But the state of our economy also makes those job search resources more important than ever. So as we endure COVID-19 as a community, I wanna create a space where my constituents have access to employment opportunities with employers dedicated to simplifying the hiring process. So I wanna start off uh, by thanking all the employers who have made themselves available today, as well as my staff for working hard and organizing today's event. We uh, frankly had a lot of conversations about how do we do this? How do we make this so it's helpful? that people are interactive and, um, and we can bring them to a source. And so many thanks to our collaborator, the Rancho Dominguez, America's Job Center of California. You will be hearing from them soon. Um, I'm gonna hand it off to Vicki in just a moment here. And so job fairs are a unique opportunity to bring both resources and employment opportunities directly to job seekers. Oftentimes, uh, people who need jobs the most face the biggest barriers to getting them. We know this can be especially true for those in our communities. So from the job search to submitting an application to winning the interview process, there are many steps uh, in the process to navigate. So I'm trying to make it easier today. I'm bringing the jobs and the resources directly to you. Um, hopefully you're at home today. This is gonna be a great event. We will have workshops on resume building, on how to put that winning resume together. Uh, make sure you proofread. Uh, tips for job interviews, uh, making sure that you're looking at people, in this case, in a camera, um, and you are properly interacting, and the import, uh, and also um, uh, inter uh, uh, tips, not just on the job interviews, um, and connections with employers in California, but wherever it is that you are applying to. So um, I do believe what Dr. King said, no work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. And so um, there is no better quote than today. Um, and thinking of Dr. King, as we uh, embark here on this jobs fair, so thank you for being here today to take that leap. We're here to help. Now today, um, before I, I turn it over, I wanna be really brief and go over a little bit of what the federal response to COVID-19 um, and unemployment and other relevant updates uh, to job seekers. Um, I'll then walk you through how to find the job opportunities online, um, along with the job opportunities that you will find a link to California the Employment Development Officer, EDD, should you need access to their resources. Um, so just to make sure, um, it, it, we will give you the link, you can be able to go to, to those places to, to also get other opportunities. So in March, Congress passed the CARES Act. Um, you probably heard about it, you probably read about it. Um, long story short, it provided for one, a stimulus payment, basically a check in your pocket. And so, Hopefully you've received your check, and if you haven't, you've had problems, um, you may be in the next round coming out. If you have any questions, you can always call our office, 310-831-1799. Um, so that's the first uh, payment. Now, we know that's not enough. Congress is working on and talking about additional uh, payments and support. Uh, we also have provided for uh, unemployment insurance and benefits. And so those employers, um, People who are, uh, some people who historically have not qualified for like independent contractors, gig economy workers, can now um, qualify for California unemployment. And that will 
provide an additional payment by the federal government. And so that is underway. Um, we had some holdup on the self-employers, but that is now the independent contractors. That is now up and running on the California EDD website. So you can check that out as well. So um, I just wanted to um, just give you a little update on that. We're Congress is continuing to talk about whether we need to extend the time because right now for unemployment benefit that we provide in the CARES Act on the federal level, it's only until July 31st. And so today I'm hoping we're gonna all get to work on looking for work. Um, there are jobs that can be done remotely and there's um, job openings that people have right now. Um, let's just get ready and get, get to work. And so if you're having any issues uh, applying for any of the benefits, again, call our office, we're here to assist. Um, and so now the part of uh, the day that we're all excited about is um, what jobs are we talking about? Um, so go ahead and follow the directions on this slide to go to my website and you'll see it there on your screen, berrigan.house.gov. So go to that website, if you're at home, put that in your browser, put it in and head to the virtual jobs fair page. There, you will see a list of career opportunities in different industries, and you can click on learn more. So there's a button, an area that says learn more. You can click on that to read more about the organization and the position. Again, job recruiters are waiting and they wanna hear from you. So please reach out to them. Please contact them through the phone, through email, or other contact information provided on the website. Uh, one note, while there isn't a recruiter available for USPS, um, the Postal Service, and the City of Long Beach, uh, positions are listed um, on the website. So even though they are not available today, um, you should check them out and see if you qualify, if you can apply for that, if you like it. And so we encourage you uh, to check out those opportunities and apply. So. Um, I want to, again, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you to our presenters uh, for being here today. I will be checking back in with you at the end of the jobs fair. Um, and I look forward to hearing about your experiences. There will be an end of the fair survey that I hope you're going to take. And this information is really helpful for us because it'll tell us what we need to do better next time, what we can add, what didn't work. Um, if I talk too much, whatever it is, I'm here to be helpful, give you information and connect you. Okay, so um, again, thank you for being here. We're gonna check in. Don't forget to do the survey. I'm turning it over to Vicki. Vicki is from the Rancho Dominguez AJCC and she's gonna lead the workshop on resume building. And so Vicki, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Vicki and I am representing America's Job Center of California. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our resume workshop. So in this resume workshop, we're gonna go ahead and talk about, as you know, a resume, a cover letters and thank you letters. So let's go ahead and begin. Next slide. So what is a resume? A docu uh, resume is a document um, created by the person um, to present their background, skills, and accomplishments. Now, this can be both past and present um, background, skills, and accomplishments. Um, a resume is used to secure new employment. A resume is, if I can go ahead and put it back to the previous slide, um, a resume is the most professional, um, most professional positions require applicants to submit a resume. So a resume is highly important when you are a job seeker and you are applying for a position. So what goes on a resume? Um, a resume has, as you all know, your first and last name at the very top. Now your first and last name would be the uh, biggest font on your resume. So I would like to use a 16 to 20 font if you can. The way you wanna position it is however you like, whether if you want it centered, 
in the middle, on the far left or the far right. After your first and last name, you go with your contact information. Now your contact information is um, your city and state that you live in, also followed by your phone number and email. Now this is highly important. Your contact information is very important on your resume because this is how employers are gonna get in contact with you, whether if it's um, via email or through the phone. Um, you wanna make sure that the phone number you put on your resume is up to date and it is a primary number that you check on a day-to-day -day basis. The next thing is your email. Please make sure that you have a valid email address and it is a professional email. Um, unprofessional emails are a deal breaker for majority of employers looking at resumes. So please make sure that you have a professional email and that you use this email and check it on a day-to-day -day basis. Next thing is your objective. Your objective, a lot of people tend to put this as an option. I like to put it in there just because it gives it that extra personal touch on your resume. Your objective, also known as a summary, it is a two to three sentence paragraph and it's basically just stating a whole summary of your resume into a two to three sentence format. So it can start off with, your previous work history, along with a couple of skills that you've accomplished and have, followed by a kind of a call to action. So you are either looking forward to becoming an engineer or working in the medical industry. The next thing is your education and certificates. So your education and certificates, you always wanna put the most recent certificate or education you have achieved or are currently achieving. Um, this can be anything from trainings that you received some type of um, certificate or training paper that states that you completed a training. You're more than welcome to put on your education and certificate portion of your resume. The next thing is your work experience, also known as your work history. As I mentioned before, you always wanna put your previous, sorry, your present or current uh, work history or work that you currently have on the very top, followed by the oldest or past work history you've done before. You always wanna separate your dates and locations. Your dates will go on the far right and your location as to where you worked or where you got your education or certificate should fall on the far, far left below the information as to say the name of the company or the name of the position you held in that type of industry. This just keeps your resume aligned and it is readable and easy to read for the employer. The next thing is your skills. Now, Skills are probably the hardest thing a lot of people can come across just because they wanna make sure they use the correct skills. Um, please make sure that if you have any, if you are bilingual, if you have any communication, a multitasker, um, any skills that you think you may have, please go ahead and jot it down. Um, it is always great to have skills on your resume so that way they know, the employer knows, um, what type of skills you have, whether if you are bilingual, go ahead and state what type of languages you speak, you write, and read. So basically, all in a sum, a resume is a marketing tool. It is a marketing tool because it markets yourself as the applicant to the employer. Next slide. Can we go ahead and move to the next slide? Thank you. Um, the one previous before that. So resumes, do's and don'ts. So for resumes, you do wanna go ahead and tell the truth. Please make sure you don't over exaggerate or stretch the truth out, simply because when you are putting say a lie or over exaggerating the truth, when it comes down to the interview portion, employers will ask you, 
what you've done for that specific company or how many years you worked or what your position was held in that specific company. And that is a deal breaker. So please make sure you are telling the truth and as far as the information you're putting on your resume. Can we go ahead and um, put the previous slide before that? Another do is you do want to include your contact information. Um, as I mentioned before, please make sure that the contact information um, you are putting is the most um, accurate and up to date, meaning you do have a working phone number as well as a working email. Do keep it at a one page resume simply because um, you are not the only one applying to this certain job position. Employers are looking at over more than 20 to 50 or even more applicants. So their time is very limited and they probably look at your resume within less than a minute. So they do skim through it. Um, if it is more than a page, it is a little bit of a deal breaker. They probably won't be able to look through the entire resume. So try to keep your resume at a one page. Do align your dates and locations to the right. Excuse me, as I mentioned before, the date should be on the far right and the location as to where you received your certificate, where you've gone to school, and where you um, previously or currently work at should be on the far left, um, right below the position you've held and the company you worked for. Um, this just keeps your resume aligned neatly and it is easy and accessible for the employer to read and um, get easy access to, say if they wanna look at skills or if they wanna look at your previous work history, they're able to find it quickly. What you don't wanna include is any type of confidential information. By confidential, I mean if you are working with clients, if you are in the medical industry, um, you don't wanna list your patients or clients, kids names that you worked for in the past just for, um, the privacy of those individuals. So to be mindful and please make sure that you have um, the information that it is confidential and it stays confidential in your resume. Um, do not include more than two, I would say two to three fonts. And this um, correlates with the alignments of your dates and locations. You wanna make sure that you don't use more than three, two to three fonts um, simply because it will look a little messy. Um, you wanna make sure you, want to use fonts like Times Roman or Calibri. Um, fonts like that will keep your resume aligned and um, easily um, accessible for employers. Don't go overboard with text effects. So this is the same thing that correlates with the fonts. Make sure that you have your resume neatly um, and it is in needed fonts. Do not send um, your Word document to the employer because the Word document should just be for your purposes only. When you do want to submit your resume, you always want to make sure you transfer it into a PDF version, meaning a public document format. Um, this is just to make sure that it is a published document that you're sending to the employer and the Word doc should just be saved onto your desktop and should just be used for your purposes only. Say for instance, if you are trying to go back and edit, add, remove certain things from your resume that you don't wanna put, um, you use that Word doc. And also the biggest thing of all is please, please spell check. Um, sometimes we can't fully rely on um, programs to um, spell check or grammatically check our resumes or projects and stuff like that. I personally would like to give it a second pair of eyes to read, whether if it's giving it to a friend, a coworker, a family member. Um, maybe they think um, any certain sentences or words are a little bit confusing, they'll probably go ahead and tell you. So try to give your resume a second pair of eyes before submitting it to the employer. Next slide.
Okay, so did you know a good 40% of hiring managers spend less than a minute reviewing a resume? Um, so this is why I mentioned before, please try to keep your resume um, within one page. Um, it is less than a minute, can come very quickly, and it's probably not enough time to, for the employer to review all of the information you put on your resume. So please make sure that you keep it at a one page resume. 75% of human resources, resource managers have caught a lie on resumes. As I mentioned before, please make sure that the information you are putting on your resume is accurate and truthful. Um, it is a deal breaker for resource managers to actually catch a lie and immediately disqualify the candidate. It is unfortunate, unfortunate and it does happen, so please make sure that you are putting the correct information. An unprofessional email is a major problem for 35% of employers. Please make sure that the email that you are putting on your contact information is up to date, but also is a professional email. So any unprofessional emails, um, go ahead and push it off to the side for personal use only. And if you don't have a professional email, go ahead and create one. Um, and please be mindful to use appropriate uh, wording when it comes to creating a professional email. An estimate 77% of hiring managers immediately disqualify resumes because of grammatical mistakes and typos. As I mentioned before, please make sure um, don't heavily rely on um, grammars and spell checks from um, programs, uh, virtual programs. Um, always want to give it a second pair of eyes. Maybe there was something that the computer didn't catch that maybe um, a family member did. So always want to give it a second pair of eyes um, to catch those grammatical mistakes and typos. A resume that is longer than two pages is a deal breaker for more than 17% of hiring managers. So this correlates with the first bulletin where please make sure you keep your resume at a one page. Next slide. Okay, so we have a sample of a resume here. Now, just judging based off of this resume, you can kind of see that it is more than two fonts. That is perfectly fine. Um, I know some of them are bolded. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and look at Miss Ebony Moore. So if you can go ahead to the sample of the resume and go back a power a slide. So we're gonna go ahead and look at Miss Ebony Moore. She is from Portland, Oregon. Her number is 123456789. Her email address is emore at email.com. Next thing is her summary. So you can see right here that she has uh, two to three sentences on her summary, which is perfectly fine. And it kind of sums up her experience. Her, she put, jots down some of her skills and where she has worked um, at before. <clears throat> the next thing is her education. So her education, she went to Northwest Vermont University from August 2012 to May 2014. She got her Bachelor's of Science in Computer Information Systems. Next is her experience um, or work history, however you wanna go ahead and word it, you're more than welcome to word it, experience or work history. Um, she worked at Trade Lot, at Clear, Cloud Clearwater. So as you can see, the dates um, on each section um, are different because um, as I mentioned before, the most current to present um, or recent jobs that you have secured in the past, um, you always want to put them at the very top, followed by the oldest ones following below them. Um, this just keeps it organized and it kind of shows the employer, okay, you worked here before, you worked there after. So it keeps, it, it keeps your resume organized and up to date. Next thing goes on your, um, the next thing at the very bottom is your skills. So she puts about two to four bulletins of skills. You're more than welcome to put your skills at the very top 
after your summary. However you want to arrange it is, um, it's really up to you. Just make sure that your resume does flow. So if you want to take out summary and put your skills at the very top because you feel your skills are strong, um, by all means, go ahead. Next slide. So next, we're gonna go ahead and talk about cover letters. Now, cover letters um, are essential to the application portion when you are in the process of seeking a job. Um, cover letters, um, what essentially they are, is an overview of your work experience most relevant to the job posting. Its purpose is to introduce yourself in a personal, compelling way so that the hiring manager wants to review your resume or cover letter. So keep in mind your cover letter, although it may sound the same, um, it's very different from your resume. Although they may have the same information, please don't just copy paste whatever you have on your resume and attach it to your cover letter. Your cover letter goes more in depth. Um, it explains more of your skills, more of your work history, and what you've done for certain companies, so just keep that in mind. When writing a cover letter, you should introduce yourself, mention the job or kind of job you're applying for or looking for, show that your skills and experience match the skills and experience needed to do the job, encourage the reader to read your resume, and lastly, you wanna finish with the call to action. For an example, asking the employer to have an interview with you or a meeting. Next slide. Go back a slide. So what you shouldn't include in your cover letter, what you shouldn't include in your cover letter is typos and mistakes. Um, always you want to make sure that you are spell checking your cover letter. It is, um, it gets even better to get someone else to read and point out any mistakes or confusing things you may have um, probably skipped. Um, people you could ask to read your cover letter includes um, friends, family members, your career teacher, um, coworkers, even um, your supervisor can be a great one. Go ahead and go to the next slide. One before that. Um, so you do want to include, um, including a whole resume in your cover, cover letter, um, you shouldn't include this. Um, you don't just, like I mentioned before, you don't want to cut and paste your resume in your cover letter. Um, try to reword the information in your resume rather than just repeating it. Keep your cover letter um, short and let your resume tell the whole story using I too much. Now, I know sometimes it's a little difficult um, to write a sentence using other than the word I, but try not to overuse the phrase as, for instance, I believe or I am. Remember, it's not about you, it's about how you can help the employer. Once you've written your letter, read over it and try to take out or rewrite as many sentences that start with I as much as you can. Now, um, I know in the sample letter that you're currently seeing right now, there are a couple of sentences that start with I. That is totally fine, but we would, we don't, what we don't want to do is start every sentence with the letter I. Um, don't mention you are, what you shouldn't do is you shouldn't mention that you are applying for other jobs. Um, even though most, empl most employers will obviously assume you're applying for more than one job, you don't need to mention it in your cover letter. 
So try to keep that out of your cover letter and just mainly focus on the main goals, your main skills, your work history, and emphasize more on that. So as you can see on the sample letter that you are currently seeing on the screen, we have Ms. Brenda Doyle. Ms. Brenda Doyle is from some town um, and she has her updated phone number and email on the top left of the cover letter. And she is currently writing to Mr. Mark George, who is the general manager of ABC Company. So she addresses Mr. George and she is saying on her first paragraph, which we had mentioned before, is by introducing yourself. Um, she is stating, I am writing to apply for the auto mechanic position advertised on Monster. So as you can see, she states what position to what company she's applying for. She is saying, I am confident my auto repair and maintenance skills would be valuable for the state of the art shop in some town. And then the paragraphs go on and she goes more in depth on her second and third paragraph about her previous work history. She has what she, when she has done for specific companies. The last thing, which I mentioned before, the very last paragraph should be a call to action. And it says, I am confident my mechanical skills would benefit your customers team members. And bottom line, I am, if I'm selected for the position, you can call me at, and then she goes and addresses her updated phone number or email, whichever one you're more comfortable or, or feel you will get an update sooner. Um, you're more than welcome to put your email rather than your phone number. And to set up a meeting, I hope to hear from you soon. Sincerely, she puts her name, and then in closure, she puts, attaches her resume. Next slide. So next, we're going to move on to thank you letters. So once um, you do the application, you send in your resume and you send in your cover letter, you get the interview portion. Um, after following the uh, first initial interview, what a lot of job seekers tend to forget is to actually send a thank you letter. So a, a thank you letter is a personal letter used to express appreciation to the other party in a personal or professional level. It provides an opportunity for the candidate to present her skills or his skills and accomplishments in another format and market the value they'll add to the employer or to the company that they're applying for. Next slide. So five reasons to send a thank you letter. A thank you letter creates an opportunity to reconnect with the employer. So please make sure, and a, a thank you letter is very, um, it's shorter than the cover letter. It's maybe a paragraph to two paragraphs. Um, and it follows um, the reasons why you wanna send a thank you letter is because it follows Following, um, following up keeps your candidacy top in mind to the employer. Written correspondence gives you another chance to sell your strengths. The document enables you to address points you neglected to discuss during the interview portion. So I get interviews can be very nerve wracking. And sometimes, you know, as much as we rehearse what we're gonna to say to the employer. Sometimes the majority of the stuff doesn't fully get through because of how nervous we get. Um, this is your chance to um, reflect back on certain things you forgot to mention in the interview and jot it down in the thank you letter. So this gives you another opportunity to address key points that you forgot to address in the interview. A letter helps develop report and increases the employer's comfort level in your candidacy. Next slide. Next.
So a couple do's and don'ts for thank you letters. Um, what you do want to do is you do want to highlight what the employer liked about you. Um, anything from um, how you represented your past previous work history, how they liked a certain skill that you um, addressed in the interview. This is a time to um, highlight what the employer liked about you. Um, you do want to cover positive information you wish you had said in the interview. Never want to be negative in a thank you letter. You always want to be positive and bring up certain uplifting things that was brought up in the interview. Express your skills in areas that the employer showed concerned over. Keep the message short. You don't want to um, write a two to three page thank you letter. Um, you just want to keep it short simple and straight to the point. As I mentioned before with resumes and cover letters, the same thing follows with thank you letters. You want to proofread very carefully before submitting it to the employer. Um, as I mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, um, you want to give your thank, thank you letter another pair of eyes for them to read. Um, since it is a little, um, it, since the thank you letter is a little bit shorter than the cover letter. It should be, it should take a little, um, it should be a little bit easier or faster um, to proofread. Um, a couple don'ts. Um, don't send generic or canned thank you letters to employers. Never want to fax your thank you letter. Um, faxing um, is a big don't simply because you want to either give the thank you letter personally to the employer, or if you have their email address, you want to go ahead and send it via email. This just gives it more of a personal touch rather than faxing it to the company. Um, you don't want to claim experience or qualifications you don't have. As I mentioned before in the resume, um, you want to be truthful, never want to exaggerate the truth or lie when it comes to claiming any type of skills or experience certificates you may or may not have. Don't forget to sign it. It gives that extra personal touch on your thank you letter. And I'm pretty sure the employer will highly appreciate you sending um, a thank you letter with um, a touch of your signature at the very bottom. Next slide. Okay, so on this, um, this is a sample of a thank you letter. Um, it is addressed, um, Dear Mr. Brown, who is probably the, probably the employer, I appreciate the opportunity I had to interview with you last week at XYZ Corporation. I was glad to learn more about your company, your company's public relationship, relations goals, and my future role in accomplishing those goals. I feel that my background in English and political studies will make me the perfect fit for this position. And your thoughts on the direction of XYZ Corporation um, should take um, solidified my interest in this position. Thank you again for your time meeting with me and providing valuable advice. I look forward to the next step in the application process and future opportunities that may arise. Please feel free to contact me with any questions at, and then they go ahead and address their phone number. If you don't wanna put your phone number, you're more than welcome to put your email. Sincerely, your signature and your name at the very bottom. Now there's a question as to when is the appropriate time to send a thank you letter to the employer. Now, I personally would like to send it either the day of, either um, more in the afternoon, the day of when you got interviewed, or give it about a week. Never want to go more than a week, um, simply because you're probably not the only um, candidate that they are interviewing. Um, if you go more than a week, the, the, your name will probably not be at the top of their mind as far as candidacy. So if you send it, say, a month later, they're not going to remember who you were. If you send it within a, a day after to a week, then that should be perfectly fine. Next slide.
Um, so I'll go ahead. Thank you so much for having me. I will go ahead and look at the Q&A portion at the very bottom to answer any questions regarding the topics we have gone over. Thank you so much for having me and I'll go ahead and introduce Mr. Joseph Gaxiola who will be covering the interview portion. Um, well, hello everyone. Thank you, my name is Joseph Gaxiola and I am a career planner at the Rancho Dominguez America's Job Center of California. Um, excellent job, Vicki. Really, really good, really informative. I'd like to thank Congresswoman and her staff for the opportunity to be able to speak. Um, so like Vicki, uh, I am a career planner and as a career planner, my job is to make sure that people are prepared and work ready. And so, um, one of the big things that uh, we commonly notice is that people are lacking interview skills. And so today I want to discuss with you guys interviewing skills, how to get the job. So it's really important that um, there's certain skills we get before we uh, start to prepare to interview. So if we can go to the next slide, please. So I, I want to start off by talking to you guys about the first, the top five interviewing mistakes. And so uh, one of the biggest mistakes we see from, we hear from businesses about people who are interviewing for jobs is a lack of preparation. And so, um, you know, a lot of times people are going, they're applying for these jobs, they have a resume, they do all these things, but they go and they don't understand one, the company that they're applying for. Um, they do not understand the position that they're applying for. Um, you know, they could be applying for, um, to go work at Amazon and they think they're working in an office. Uh, when it turns out they're, they signed up to be an Amazon truck driver. Um, so it's very important um, that, you know, we, we conquer these things, which is the lack of preparation. Another big thing that employers are constantly talking to us about um, with the job seekers is that a lot of these job seekers are dressed inappropriately. Uh, they lack hygiene. They lack uh, the proper clothing. So it's very, they come underdressed. Um, so it's very important that uh, as job seekers, we come dressed appropriately. Another big mistake is we see a poor resume or a lack of portfolio, um, meaning a lack of work history, lack of education history, um, uh, inability to bring a reference list. And so these are really, really simple things that we can discuss on how to fix so we don't continue in these mistakes. Another mistake that we see is a lack of participation or communication during the interview. And so um, it's really important that um, you know, when they're asking you questions, you don't just nod your head, but you actually give a verbal answer that you give more than a one word response. So these are all great things that you know, you, we as job seekers need to strengthen. And that's what we're going to be further and discuss. And lastly, forgetting to follow up. Like Vicki said, forgetting to send that thank you letter, forgetting to um, just follow up on the job opportunity. And so I want to talk about these five mistakes and how we can get rid of them and how we can better prepare you to get the job with interviewing skills. So if we go to the first slide, please, the next slide. So the first thing I wanna to talk to you guys is preparing for the interview. So it's very important, like I said, is that you know what the position and the company you are interviewing for. And so some of the ways you can do that is you can look up the company itself. Um, everything's on Google, you can look up uh, what the company does, what their day-to-day -day operations look like. Um, you can look up their financial statements. You can look up all the information you can on Google. Um, it's also really good that you understand what the position is you're applying for. Um, so there's a lot of great websites where you can find that. A great uh, resource is Glassdoor, where it has a lot of great companies information, as well as the individual positions information. And so it's really important that you understand um, your responsibility the job, you know, it's, under, it's good that you'd understand maybe the benefits, that you would understand what the expectations are. It's really important that you understand what the schedule looks like. Um, you definitely, you know, if you don't want to work a graveyard shift, but the company's only open during the night, it's really important that you understand these things prior to going to the interview. And so it's really important that you in research as much info about the company as possible, because that is a very common question is, how much do you know about this company? What do you know about this company? And a lot of these job seekers, they don't know much. And so you definitely want to put that edge on your shoulder 
if you go with uh, as much information as you know as a company to be able to tell them a little bit about the company. And it's also good if you can talk to other people with the same position. So if you know anyone in the company, I would definitely try to get in contact with them and try to tell them, ask them as much as possible about what the uh, expectations are for the job that you are currently applying for. Another big thing you wanna do is keep your portfolio updated. Um, your portfolio consists of your resume, your employment history, your education history, and a list of references. So you wanna bring all of these documents when you go to interview. It's very important, like Vicky said, your resume is up to date. You have the proper email, you have the proper phone number, the most up-to-date phone number and email. You have your employment history is up to date to the most uh, relevant time. Your education history is up to date. Um, if you didn't go to college, you have at least your high school diploma on there. Uh, you have your, if you did some college, it's really important that you put some of the, that you are currently attending college or you have some of a college background. It's also really important that you put your list of references. So you always bring that as well. So in case they do ask for it, you have it ready. Or if you want, you can just offer it. The more information, the better opportunity you have. I can't tell you enough how many employers say that people come lacking information. They just have a resume, you know, but it's like, man, I want the employment history. I want to know as much about the job seeker to better understand if I feel that they're valued enough to go into my company. So it's very, very important that you keep your portfolio up to date and that you know as much as you can about the company and the position you are applying for. We go to the next slide, please. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you dress for the interview successfully. Um, and so it's really, really important that you come dressed professionally. So here's a couple of little small pointers that you can start off. It's just having clean and well-pressed clothing. Um, you don't know how far that can go. You can be dressed in a full three-piece suit, but if it's not ironed, that can really not look well. Even though it's nice clothing, it, it looks sloppy and tacky. So it's very important that your clothes um, are clean and well-pressed because you can even wear a button shirt and just some khakis, but if they're clean and they're well-pressed, they can make you look like a hundred bucks. Um, they can be, you know, $5 clothes. They can be used from Goodwill, but clean them and press them. You can really, really uh, look better than what you're paying for. And it's also really important that you're clean shaven and ni nicely uh, trimmed hair. Um, so, you know, if you have a beard, um, you definitely can have a beard, but just make sure it looks clean. Um, it's really important that uh, your hair looks clean. You comb your hair, um, you know, hygiene, really, really important. Take a shower before you come. Um, and these are all really good things to understand too is uh, now during COVID-19, a lot of people are doing virtual job interviews. And so a lot of times people are doing them uh, through Zoom. They're doing them over the phone. Um, they're doing them through some type of video chat. And so if they are doing them through video chat, these same concepts still apply. Just because it's a video chat doesn't mean that you can come in your pajamas, come with your hair all messed up with a hat on. No, it, employers are still looking for professionalism. They're still looking for people who are clean and people who are clean shaven. It's really important that you conceal any facial piercings. Um, you know, um, I've heard different uh, people say that uh, you just want to keep it to your ears, um, nothing more. So any facial piercings, I definitely wouldn't have those. You also want to conceal your tattoos. Um, it's, I know there are some companies that allow tattoos, but there are some companies that may not. So you really, it's better to stay on the safe side and make sure they're covered. Um, if you have any gang affiliated tattoos, I would make sure those are covered as well. So you definitely want to make sure, um, you know, you wear a long sleeve. Um, if you have to button your top button to cover any tattoos on your neck, but just make sure that you are looking the best that you can to give you the best opportunity going forward. You want to make sure that your nails are clean. Um, your nails aren't long. You don't see dirt in under your nails. Um, and these are simple little concepts, but that can really go a long way. Um, imagine shaking someone's hand and you see all this dirt under their nails. That would make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. So it's really important that we take these simple steps to put us ahead of everyone that is applying for the job. Um, subtle uh, fragrances only. You want to make sure you're not, you know, covered too much in perfume or cologne that's too strong. 
Um, it could just give the wrong, it could give the wrong idea. So you really want to make sure that, or it could give a bad impression that you just, you know, um, you wear maybe two or three sprays or maybe you don't wear any. Um, it's really up to you, but you definitely don't want to drowse yourself in uh, cologne. It's really important as well that you don't smoke prior. So don't come in with your breath smelling like smoke um, and make sure you're not chewing gum during an interview. Chewing gum, it sometimes can be um, looked at as unprofessional as well as it can be uh, distracting at times. And it could uh, affect the way you're speaking. I know when I'm talking sometimes and I'm chewing gum, sometimes I may uh, cough on it or sometimes it may, um, I may swallow it by accident. So you just don't want to allow that opportunity for you to hiccup during the interview. Um, and one of the biggest ones, and we find this from uh, businesses all the time that job seekers do is that they do not turn off their cell phones. So man, when you, when you go to an interview, before you walk in the door, I would turn off that cell phone. And you just wanna make sure it's completely off so that no one, no one calls you, um, nothing goes off during the interview. Um, you don't know how many times I've heard stories of job seekers, their phone going off and the business employer just doesn't hire them just because of that. So very, very important that your phone is turned off. You have to leave it in the car, you're not comfortable, then put it in your pocket, but make sure it's turned off. And so it's really important also to understand that attire is determined for the job for which you're applying. And so, um, like I said, a lot of these rules may apply and maybe some of these rules may not. So it's really important to understand where you're applying to. If you're applying to a big corporation in an office, then yeah, you probably would need um, you know, a suit, a tie, all these different things. If you're applying to construction, you may need a bit of a different approach. If you're applying to um, all sorts of different companies, they may require different things. So it's really important that you look up the company and you understand what they're looking for. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So a couple things, what you wanna to bring to an interview. It's really important that you bring some paper to jot down the names or information or any questions that the employer is asking you. Um, you, wanna, you wanna always make sure you have a black pen. Um, you always wanna make sure you bring a photo ID um, so the employer can verify that you are the person you said on the application. Um, you have a reference list, you have your work history and information. And even if you're doing these conversations through Zoom, there's nothing wrong with having this information if you're doing it through a virtual chat room or through a video chat, that you have the pen and paper. So if they do ask you any questions, you can note it down, um, or they give you, hello, my name's John, and I'm the manager. You can note down their name to make sure that you don't uh, forget anything that's being asked. It's also really important that you bring several copies of your personalized cover letter and resume. Um, so it's really important that you understand if you're um, interviewing with one person or if you're interviewing with a panel of five people. So you really don't know what the interview process can look like. I would try to study and see if you can research what the interview process is like. But if you don't know, it's better to be safe than sorry. It's better that you have five resumes because if you interview with the panel and you only have one, um, it's gonna be a lack because not everyone's gonna be able to see your resume. And so you wanna make sure you're able to pass out your resume and show it to everyone. And it's also really important that you have your portfolio with evidence of your accomplishments. And so that can be your work history, um, that can be uh, all found in your resume, that can be found in your cover letter. Um, it's really important that you have as much evidence of your previous work history or previous skills or previous education as possible. Um, if you have you know, a bachelor's degree or master's degree, it's also nice to bring your uh, diploma. Uh, so just making sure that you look as um, fulfilled as possible with all the information that you are bringing forward. If we can go on to the next slide. Um, and so it's really important that you're prepared as well with some of the commonly asked interview questions, that you're constantly uh, thinking of these questions and constantly having these answers prepared. And so um, I was looking up some of the common questions and I know these are some of the questions that we've asked in my job as we're interviewing staff to come and work with us is, why do you wanna work for our company? Uh, what makes a comp this company someplace that you would want to work? And so it's really important that you think through these answers. Why do you want to work for this company? Why do you want to work for the job that you're applying for? And so you can have essentially pre-made responses. You can already be prepared like, okay, if they ask me this question, I know how I'm going to answer this question. 
if they ask me what are my future career plans, I know how to answer this question. Um, one of the big things you want to do too is you want to always remain positive. So like really the third question, tell me about yourself. You definitely want to say some positive things that may um, go in line with the company's goals or the company's vision. Um, you definitely don't want to say, you know, well, I love to party. Um, I love to hang out with my friends. Um, I love to watch TV. No, th name things that are relevant to the company. If you're applying for construction, you could say, I love to uh, build things. I love to put stuff together. Um, if you're applying to be a computer um, IT person, you can say, well, I love working on computers. I love building computers. Um, so try to tell them, about, tell them stuff about you that's relevant to the field. Um, another good question is, why did you choose this field of work? And so make it personal. Tell them truly why you chose this, this field of work. Um, don't just say, oh, because you guys are hiring. Oh, because I need a job. But no, I'm, I'm applying here because I want to better your company. I'm applying here because I want to make a change. I want to do something. I want to help you guys out. I want to better serve the community through this job. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can say rather than just, oh, it's just a job I've seen online. It's also really important as well that you describe um, that you're able to describe a past work situation where you encountered a problem and describe how you solved it. You don't know how many times um, I've heard people say they've, asked, they've been asked that question and they don't know how to respond. So it's really important that you're able to answer that question that makes you look positively, um, that makes you look like you um, took the high road. And so it's really important that you um, are prepared with these questions. Uh, the next question as well is what is your strength and weaknesses? And so you always want to make your strengths look like strengths and you got to figure out a way to make your weaknesses look like strengths as well. And that can be difficult, but some of the things you can say is like, um, sometimes I uh, work too hard or sometimes, um, you know, I get too involved in my work. Um, there's a lot of different things you can say that are weaknesses that can make you look positive. So you really want to make sure that you're always making yourself um, look like the best applicant out there. If we go to the next slide. Um, and so participation in the interview, it's so, so crucial. It's crucial that you're honest and you give complete answers. Um, never just, uh, they, never let them ask you a question and you just nod your head. Always be able to um, give a story or an example of why um, you are what you're responding to. And they may say, are you, um, a hard worker. You don't just want to nod your head. You want to say, no, I am a hard worker. And I'm a hard worker because, um, you know, when something was happening at work, I made sure that I stood the rest of the night to make sure the job gets done. Um, you want to make sure that you're positive about yourself and your past experiences, that you're always talking about referring to past moments at your previous job and how you did the right thing or you made the right choices. Avoid one to two word responses. Never just say, um, are you a hard worker? And you say, yes, I am. And leave it at that. No. Like I said, give examples. It's really important that you give concrete answers. Um, don't give these long stories that are confusing. Give just a, maybe a two sentence a story, three sentence story, and keep it simple to the point. Uh, paraphrase the question to avoid misunderstanding. So if they ask you, are you a hard worker? Say, paraphrase the question by saying, yes, I am a hard worker because, and this will help you when you're talking to make sure you're on track to what they're asking you. And then limit your responses. Um, so you don't want to go on and give a five minute response. You know, you want to give anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute um, and don't linger on the conversation. Be concrete to the point and just make sure you're, you're ending by making yourself look as positive and looking like the best applicant out there. If we go to the next slide. Um, and so then it's really important that you follow up after the interview. Um, and this is like Vicky said, a thank you letter. Something as simple as a letter stating your appreciation, a letter or an email. Um, explain what you liked about the position and how excited you would be to get the position. Um, sound enthusiastic about working for the company. Explain how, you know, when you went to the corporation to uh, interview that you just fell in love with every aspect of the company and you really enjoyed um, everything that they had to offer. And you also want to uh, make sure that this try try to make sure that you send this email or thank you letter within a 24 hour time span. And so you want to make sure that you're really on top of it at the moment you leave. Um, if you can that night, send in, send an email and let them know that you're thankful for the opportunity. 
Um, and so it's just really important that you don't, don't linger on. Like Vicky said, you don't want to send that a month later um, when they've already forgotten about you, but you want it. You want them to come in the next day and see your email and say, Oh, wow. I remember that participant. I remember their interview. I really like them. Let's, let's give them a call. Um, keep, you want to stay in their head as much as possible to um, try to get the job. And if we could just go to the next slide. And so some last minute successful interviewing tips. Um, you always want to note the name of the interviewer. Um, that's super important when you can remember their name. Um, if you could come in, shake their hand and say, hey, John, um, thank you for allowing me to interview. Um, you never want to come in and, and not know who you're looking for during the interview. So when you come in, you get a, when you get a phone call for an interview, write the person's name down, come into the job and say, hello, I'm here for an interview with John, the manager. Um, you want to make sure you know the position, whether he's the assistant manager, um, if he's the manager, um, if he's the director. There's a lot of different things you want to make sure that you know prior to arriving. Always plan to arrive early to the interview. So important. You never want to be there late. I always plan to arrive 30 minutes early. And then what I suggest is you wait in the parking lot for 15 minutes and make sure you're prepared and you walk in 15 minutes prior to the interview. So you're always 15 minutes early to the actual interview, but you're 30 minutes early to the parking lot. And during that 15 minutes prior, you're just studying your information in your car. And then once you get it, once it comes to the 15 minute prior mark, you walk right in and you let them know you're ready to interview. Um, it's super important that you're courteous to everyone you encounter in with that company. Um, I've heard of employers saying that, you know, this person hit it really well during the interview but they were very rude to the uh, secretary at the front desk. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're professional and that you're um, saying hi, you're saying bye, saying you're pleased and thank you, just common courtesy. Um, and so these are really things that can set you apart from other applicants. And the last thing I want to say is that you just got to do your best. Just give it your all, leave it all on the court. Um, and I think as you do your best and you leave it all on the court, these opportunities will come your way. If we could just go to our closing slide. And so now that I've listed you all these five things, you are now prepared to successfully interview. And so I hope you took some great notes. I hope you took everything to heart. I know they're gonna be sharing this PowerPoint after. Um, and so we're gonna go back and we're gonna run over the resume uh, building, inter the resume building PowerPoint. And we're gonna go back to Vicki. And then once she's done, we're gonna go briefly back into this one again to anyone who may have missed it. And then we'll answer questions. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, so before going to the overview of the resume portion again, I will go ahead and um, answer a couple of questions that a couple of job seekers have posted on our Q&A or on our chat box. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and this is for relevance in a resume or interviews. So if you have a question regarding any of the PowerPoint information we just discussed, please feel free to comment um, on the Q&A box um, below. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with the first question. Um, the first one is, when we contact the recruiters listed today, should we include our resume slash cover letter in the message already? Or can we just reach out today and ask about the opportunities? Um, it's really up to you, um, whether if your resume is already up to date as well as your cover letter, feel free to go ahead and submit it. Um, but please make sure before submitting it, you are proofreading it and you are um, putting it in the message um, to the employer as a PDF and not a Word document. Um, if you don't feel comfortable yet and want to hear more about the opportunities, about what the employer has to offer, um, you don't have to necessarily send it. Um, you can actually reach out to them today to seek more information about um, on the opportunities. Thank you so much for asking that question. Um, let's see, another one is, um, will I be able to view the resume, cover letter, and thank you letter on site? Okay, so it says that we have a representative um, who's gonna be answering that question. So please just be on the lookout for that answer. Um, 
The next question is, since a lot of companies look through resumes using computer programs as a primary filter, should we put as many of the job requirements in the resume as possible, meaning that we show the computer program what it wants to see so you can actually um, get through to a person? Now, um, yes and no. Um, you want to make sure that the job requirements that are posted are requirements that you have already done, meaning skills or positions that you have already obtained before in the past. As I mentioned before, you don't want to over exaggerate or stretch the truth out. Um, if you do have certain skills or certain requirements that you do meet 100% with the job posting that is um, posted, by all means, go ahead. Um, but please make sure that the ones that you are putting on your resume are um, truthful and are accurate, meaning you have done them before. Thank you so much for, um, for that question. Let's see. Can you go over again why we should send our resume in a Word or PDF file? Of course, um, I can answer it right now, but I'll go over it again in the PowerPoint. So the reason why you want to send your resume um, as a PDF version is because it's a published document already, meaning that it is published and it is ready to be sent to the employer, meaning that it's been spell checked already, it's been grammatically, there's no mistakes or typos or um, spelling or grammatical errors, and it's ready to be sent out to the employer via email. The reason why you don't want to submit your resume as a Word doc is because the Word doc is able to edit and change your resume. That Word document should just be kept for your personal use only and not for the job seeker. So that's why you want to save it as if you want to put first your first and last name and your resume, save it as that onto your desktop for future reference. Thank you so much for that question. Let's see. Um, when it comes to a resume, would you recommend the layout you showed? Now, the layout that I showed for the resume, um, it's just a sample of it and it's just an option. You are more than welcome to find other layouts that you feel are better. Um, I know for if you do have Microsoft Word, um, I do like using that because they already have templates um, already set out for you it, and it's all it's asking for you is to jot down your information below. So if you see a better um, layout than the one I've showed you before, by all means, go ahead and use it. It's really um, up to you and what your preference is for your resume. Thank you so much, France, um, for that question. Let's see. Now there is an interviewing question at the very bottom and it says, when interviewing, how would you answer the question, why were you terminated from your last position if it was not COVID related? I'll go ahead and mute that and have um, Joseph Gaxioli answer this question in just one second, okay? Hello? Yes, so uh, one of the ways I would answer the question is um, you can be honest and you can point out the mistake you've made, but you can also talk about the change you've made going forward and how you've planned to make sure that this mistake wouldn't happen again. Um, so let's say you could say um, you lost your job because you were always late. You can then state, well, I lost my job because I was always late, but what I'm doing now is I created a planner and I plan to make sure that I monitor what I'm doing to make sure that I'm always on time and I'm always going to be able to get to work early. Um, so, you know, you, you have to be honest with the mistake that it was because a lot of times they will call. Um, and then, but you have to talk about how you made a change and kind of bring it back to a more positive aspect. Uh, you've made a change, uh, you've changed your life around, and now you're planning to be on time. And if you were given the opportunity, you can guarantee that, you know, you're no longer going to be late. Um, but you have to prove that, too. So if it was because you were late, you can also say, like, even for the interview today, I came 30 minutes early. 
And so I plan to do stuff like that regularly to make sure that I don't fall into these old habits. Um, so again, it's just a matter of bringing out the positivity in a negative situation. Um, so that's how I would answer it. Um, but again, it, it, it depends on what you got fired for or what you lost your previous job for. Hope that answers the question. Thank you so much, Joseph. Um, and we have another question. Um, it says, if the employer doesn't include a name, what do I add instead? So I believe this is meant um, regarding when you are doing the interview portion and you're ready to send that thank you letter after your interview. Um, and you can't seem to remember the name of the employer. I get it, we're all nervous. Um, try to see if the front desk can give you their business card. If not, you can go ahead and address your thank you letter to, to whom it may concern. If you can't seem to um, get the name of the um, person who interviewed you. I would just try to do my best research as much, much as possible. Sometimes usually what happens is that the employer does email you so sometimes their name or well, majority of the time their name is on the email so try to do your research first before sending in that thank you letter as to to whom it may concern thank you so much for answering that question let's see Okay, so we do have another interview question. Um, the question says, I applied for a position for customer service, but in two different areas of work. How can I state that in a job interview? I'll go ahead and um, give this to Joseph Gaxiola to answer. Yes, hello, Jose G. Um, can you better explain that question? Um, you applied for a position, but in two different, in customer service, but in two different areas. Um, how can I state that in a job interview? Um, my first question is, I, I, I wouldn't state that I was applying for two different positions in the job interview. So I guess I'm, I'm a little confused about the question. But if you have a minute to type up some more information, I can better understand. Um, but I would just, whatever position you're interviewing for, because I applied for customer service at a hospital. Applied at jobs before they didn't. Okay, let me read this again. Yeah, so you can just, you can, while you're working at Disneyland, you can still state that you were working at Disneyland in your, um, on your resume as well as in the interview. I mean, you can state that you're just looking for the opportunity to better yourself. So there's nothing wrong with interviewing for a job, even though you have a job, um, because, you know, we're all trying to better ourselves. And so, um, let's say you're working for a better position for a position at the hospital that pays more has better benefits um and you can just explain i'm currently working at disneyland um i do these different jobs there and i know i see how they can correlate to the position that you guys have available and so i think i would be the great fit for this position because at disneyland i do these things and here i know i can do them i'm already trained for these uh tasks or duties um at the hospital. And so again, like I said, there's nothing wrong with applying for a new position, even though you're currently working at a different place. Um, hope that answers your question. Um, let's see. Thanks for the help. Yes, anytime. Turn it back to Vicki. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, okay, so. Let's see, um, I applied, um, there's another question. I applied at jobs before, but they, but they didn't add a reference, but they or you didn't add a reference. What should I include instead? Um, normally what happens with references, 
Um, I like to personally jot down on my resume at the very bottom. Um, you can put reference, references upon request. Now, if the manager employer is asking for references to go ahead and call, say, past coworkers of yours, past supervisors, they'll go ahead and do so. Um, you can reach out to them again to see if they are, um, if they do need references, you're more than welcome to send it. I would keep it um, at a three to four um, reference, um, meaning four people in your reference list. Um, I hope that does answer your question. Thank you so much for that question. Great. Okay, so that answers the majority of the questions regarding um, resumes and interviews. So we'll go ahead and do another overview of the resume. Um, if we can go ahead and go to the very beginning of the resume PowerPoint. All right, so for the majority of the people that didn't get a chance to see this at the very beginning, we're gonna go ahead and um, go over it again. So thank you so much for joining us at the virtual job fair. We're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, resumes as well as cover letters and thank you letters. If you have any questions, please feel free to jot them down in the Q&A box and we'll go ahead and answer them at the very end. Next slide. Okay, so what is a resume? A resume is a document created by you, yourself, the person, and you're presenting any type of background, skills, or accomplishments that you have done in the past um, or currently in the present. Um, this resume is used to secure new employment, and most professional positions, um, if not all of them, require an applicant to submit a resume. Um, everything's done obviously electronically, um, nothing. Um, so I would suggest typing up a resume and submitting it via email or through the um, job posting itself if they do have a certain section. Um, so what goes on a resume? The first thing is obviously it's going to be the same. It's going to be the largest font on your resume, which is your first and last name. Try to keep this font maybe at a 16 to 20 font. Um, no bigger than that. Um, after your first and last name goes your contact information. So your contact information, you're going to go ahead and include your city and state that you live in, as well as your phone number and email. Please make sure that the phone number and email that you are putting on your resume is primary and you are um, it's a working phone number and an updated email that you are checking on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, please make sure that the email that you are providing on your contact information is a professional email. Objective information. Now, this is optional. I personally like to put the objective or summary um, on the very top because it gives it that extra personal touch. Um, the objective slash summary is a two to three sentence um, little body paragraph at the very top after your contact information and it basically it's a little um, it sums up what you've done in the past what you worked with and the certain skills you've gained now next is your education and certificates um, for that certain section you want to go ahead and put the very um, recent or current education or certificate you have received um, followed by any old or education um, experience you've done in the past. So uh, remember the most recent goes on top and the um, past or the oldest goes at the very bottom. Next is your work experience or work history. This is um, relevant obviously to your resume because you the employers actually want to see um, what you've done in the past, where you worked for, or what type of positions you've held 
and job duties you've done. So make sure with your work history, you wanna put the current position you've had or have at the very top, followed by the oldest ones at the very bottom. Skills. Skills is probably the hardest thing to do um, besides any other thing on your resume um, because a lot of people wanna make sure that they put the correct skills. Um, now, it can be anything from um, being bilingual. You wanna go ahead and jot down what type of language you speak, write, and read, um, as well as any type of communication skills. If you're a multitasker, if you um, know certain programs like Microsoft Excel really well or Access, please go ahead and jot that down. Um, this resume, um, resumes in general, are used as marketing tools to market yourself as the applicant, um, the applicant to the employer. Next. So for resumes, a couple do's and don'ts. You do want to tell the truth. Please make sure that you don't want to over-exaggerate or stretch out the truth. Um, simply because when it comes down to your interview portion, whatever you write down on your resume, the employer will ask you, oh, um, so you worked for this company. How was that like? Or what did you do? And if you probably didn't work for that company, there you're going to get caught in a lie. And that is a deal breaker for a majority of all employers. So please make sure that you do tell the truth. Do include your contact information. Um, as I mentioned before, please make sure that it is up to date. You have a working phone and an updated email that you check on a day-to-day -day basis. Do keep it at a one page. Um, simply because you are not the only person applying for this position and the employer is probably looking at more than one resume. So time is of the essence for them. So sometimes they too skim through resumes. Um, do align your dates and locations to the far right. So your dates, whether if it's uh, where, when you received your certificates, when you received your education, or where um, from what time frame uh, was your position at, um, at a certain company, you wanna keep those dates on the far right of your resume. Your location should be at the very bottom um, underneath the company um, and the position you've held in that company. This just keeps um, your resume aligned, neatly, writ um, neatly written or typed, um, and it's easy and accessible for the employer to look, okay, where's his experience or where's their experience at or where's their skills at? So it's easier to look for certain things on your resume. Don't include any confidential information. Now by confidential, I mean if you have worked with clients before, patients or kids, you don't wanna include their names um, simply because we wanna be mindful and respect the privacy of that particular um, person. Um, don't use more than two fonts. Um, don't go overboard with text effects. Um, this it correlates with also the alignments of your dates and locations. And you do want to make sure that you don't use text effects or more than two to three fonts. Um, you want to make sure, simply because um, you want to make sure that your resume is neatly typed and it's easily accessible and readable for the employer. Don't send your, um, your resume as a Word doc. Now, there's a question before that I had answered. The Word doc of your resume should just be kept for your personal use only and saved in your desktop, just in case if in the near future you wanna go ahead and um, change a couple things on your resume, remove or add or fix. Um, you have that access to your to your resume as a Word doc. Now, if you want to go ahead and submit your resume to the employer, go ahead and transfer it over to a PDF. You can convert your Word doc to a PDF and um, attach the PDF um, to see if um, it's part if the resume is part of the application process. So please make sure Word doc is just for you. PDF is for the employer. Um, now, the last thing, which is the most important thing, is please make sure you spell check. Spell check, spell check. Now, sometimes we rely heavily on, say, if you're using Microsoft Word, 
sometimes it doesn't catch run on sentences or grammatical errors. Um, I personally like to give my resume um, to another pair of eyes, um, just in case if there's any confusing uh, run on sentences, any words that may have been misspelled or are confusing to others, um, that extra pair of eyes would probably catch it and you can actually just go back, edit it, and submit it. Next. Now, did you know a good 40% of hiring managers spend less than a minute reviewing your resume? This is where it correlates with, um, as I mentioned before, um, try to keep your resume at a one page. 75% um, of human resource managers have caught a lie on a resume. Please be mindful and please go ahead and tell the truth. Any information that you are putting on your resume, make sure that it is the truth. An unprofessional email is a major problem for 35% of employers. An estimate 77% of hiring managers immediately disqualify resumes because of grammatical mistakes and errors. A resume that's longer than two pages is a deal breaker for more than 17% of hiring managers. So this is just something just, just to keep in mind when you are writing your resume. And if you are going more than a page or if you are over exaggerating on a specific skill, please make sure that you catch it before submitting it to the employer. Next. Okay, so here we have a sample of a resume. Uh, we have Miss Ebony Moore. And just to quickly go over um, this sample, your, um, I, there's a question before as to what template is more appropriate or if we can follow this type of template. Um, I answered, um, you're more than welcome to find a different template that works best for you. You don't have to really follow this same exact one. Um, but just make sure, as I mentioned before, certain things, make sure that you have your dates aligned to the far right and they are in chronological order, meaning from current to past, and you have your past work history on the far left, including the position. So you have here, Ms. Ebony Moore has her summary, her education, her experience, and her skills. Now, if you feel like your skills um, are very strong, you're more than welcome to move your skills all the way to the top. If you don't wanna put your summary because you feel like it's optional, please go ahead and remove it and put your skills on the very top. Next slide. Okay, so for cover letters, um, what is a cover letter? So a cover letter of your work, um, it, sorry, a cover letter is an overview of your work experience most relevant to the job posting. Its purpose is introduce yourself in a, more, a personal compelling way so that the hiring manager wants to review your resume or cover letter. When writing a cover letter, you should introduce yourself, mention the job or kind of job you're applying for, or looking for, show that your skills and experience match the skills and experience needed to do for the job, encourage the reader or employer to read your resume, finish with a call to action, for an example, asking for an interview or a meeting. Next. Okay, so we have a sample of our um, cover letter and we have Miss Brenda Doyle and as you can see she has quite a few uh, body paragraphs. You want to keep it um, um, at a two to three. Your first one will include you introducing yourself and your interest to the position you're applying for. The second um, body paragraph will kind of be more in depth. You're going to be explaining the positions you held in the past that are relevant to the positions uh, the position you're seeking 
or applying for. So you want to go more in depth as far as the skills, the job duties you've done before. The last paragraph, and I'll read it below, is a call to action. So for Brenda Doyle, her call to action was, I am confident my mechanical skills would benefit your customer your customers, team members, and bottom line, if I am selected to the position, you can call me at, she wrote down her phone number, sorry, she typed in her phone number. Please make sure that the phone number is up to date. Um, or she, and she put her email, you're more than welcome to put both or either or. And um, to set up a meeting, I hope to hear from you soon. Sincerely, Brenda Doyle, enclosure is her resume. So for thank you. Oh. So for thank you letters, um, we're gonna go ahead and go briefly over it. For thank you letters, um, it is a letter to thank or um, a letter of thanks or thank a thank you letter is a personal letter that is used when you are um, expressing appreciation to another party or a personal level. It provides an opportunity for the candidate to present herself, his or herself, and accomplishments in another format and market the value she'll add to the employer. Next. Five reasons to send a thank you letter. A thank you letter creates an opportunity to reconnect with the employer. Um, it follows up and keeps your, um, your candidacy top in mind with the employer. Written correspondence gives you another chance to sell your strengths. The document enables you to address points you neglected to discuss during the interview. So I get it, sometimes um, in the interview portion we can get a bit um, nervous and sometimes as much as we rehearse our interview portion, a lot of our information we want to um, discussed in the interview sometimes doesn't fully go, um, go through. So with this document, with this thank you letter, um, you can actually um, address certain points you forgot to um, address in the interview. This letter helps develop report and increases the employer's comfort level in your candidacy. Next slide. So for thank you letters, a couple do's and don'ts. Um, do highlight what the employer liked about you. Cover positive information you wish you had said in the interview. Express your skills in the areas that the employer showed concern over. Keep the measure, sorry, keep the message short and make sure to proofread every document you submit. Um, don't send a generic, don't send a generic or canned thank you letter. Never fax a thank you letter because it doesn't give that extra personal touch. You always either want to send it person, um, you can give it personally to um, the employer um, or by email. Claim, don't, never claim experiences or qualifications you don't have. Don't forget to sign it because it gives it that extra personal touch and it makes it more sincere. Next. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a sample of a thank you letter. Um, we'll go ahead and briefly go through it. Um, it doesn't have to be three um, short paragraphs. It can, you can just sum it up up to one paragraph. Um, so we have here that addresses um, Mr. Brown, who is the employer. Um, Dear Mr. Brown, I appreciate the opportunity I had to interview with you last week at XY Corporation. I was glad to learn more about your company's public relation goals and my future role in accomplishing these goals. I feel that my background in English and political studies will make me the perfect fit for this position and your thoughts on the direction of XYZ Corporation. Um, corporation should take um, solidified my interest in this position. Thank you again for the time, meeting, and providing valuable advice. I look forward to the next step in the application process and your future opportunities that may arise. Please feel free to contact me with any questions at, go ahead and provide your number, 
or email or both. Sincerely, your signature and your name. Next slide. So we're gonna go ahead and um, switch it over to Joseph Gaxiola, who's gonna go ahead and do the, another um, overview of the interviewing. Yes, hello. So uh, like you said, my name is Joseph Gaxiola, um, and I'm gonna just do a real quick brief overview of interviewing skills, how to get the job. So we go to the next slide. So real quick, the top five interviewing mistakes that we hear um, from different employers are a lack of preparation, a lack of awareness of the company, awareness of the position that their job seeker is applying for. Uh, we also see uh, more commonly people are coming into interviews dressed inappropriately, uh, coming in, you know, chanclas, not coming dressed, um, coming in shorts, wearing hats. Um, we also see something that's very common is poor resume or lack of portfolio. portfolio. Um, we also see a lack of participation or communication in the interview. Um, so the inability to talk, the inability to have good eye contact. And we also see uh, forgetting to follow up, forgetting to send that thank you letter and uh, thanking the employer for that opportunity. So we're gonna discuss how to um, not make these five mistakes. So the first thing you wanna do is prepare for the interview. You wanna learn as much as possible about the company. You wanna know um, when they started, um, what their current goals are. You wanna know uh, the position that you're applying for. You wanna know the responsibilities. You wanna understand what the expectations are. Uh, you wanna have an idea of what the pay is, what the benefits are, uh, what the scheduling is. You wanna know if this is a day shift, if it's a night shift. Um, these are all really important things that can really help you out when you're applying for this position. You also want to make sure that your portfolio is always up to date. Your resume has your most recent address, your most recent email address, your most recent phone number. Um, it also has your employment history. You have education history. When you bring education history, if you have any degrees, it's great to bring them um, or bring copies of them. And it's great to always be sure that you have a list of references on the side. So just being prepared, having that portfolio ready and knowing as much as you can about the company and the position when you're going into these interviews. If we go to the next slide. Um, so dress for success. It's super important that we come dressed appropriately for the job. And again, you have to understand that the attire determined for the job can shift depending on what job you're applying for. If you're applying for construction, if you're applying to uh, work at this mega corporation in an office, um, if you're applying to, um, you know, work at a tattoo shop, there's just a lot of different things that can change um, based off where you're applying. But these are more common rules that can be used when going into an interview. Um, having your clothes clean and well-pressed, um, being cleanly shaven and neatly trimmed your hair. Uh, make sure that you don't have any facial piercings or you don't have any um, revealing tattoos or inappropriate tattoos. Um, you wanna make sure that your nails are clean. You wanna make sure when they shake your hand, they don't look at your hand and your hands look really dirty. Um, you wanna make sure that you're not wearing any strong fragrances that could be distracting. And you always wanna make sure that you're not chewing gum because um, that can be distracting and it can also um, allow you to hiccup. I'm sure many of you guys have ever, I'm sure, how many of you guys have ever, you know, chewed on gum and then you start to choke or you coughed or, uh, you, know, you chewed it or you did you bit your tongue or something. You just never want to allow that opportunity. Um, you don't want to make sure you, you come in smelling like smoke. Make sure you're not smoking prior. And you also want to make sure that your cell phone is turned off. Something so simple, but so many people fail to do as they do not turn off their cell phone. Always make sure that your cell phone is turned off. Um, I wouldn't even silence it. I would turn it off. If you can, if you're comfortable, I would leave it in the car. Um, do not bring that to the interview. Do not allow that opportunity to happen where your phone goes off during the conversation. If we go to the next slide. We also want to make sure that you bring the proper documents or the proper items to make sure you're ready for the interview. And this also applies to virtual interviews as well. So I know a lot of people are meeting with employers right now on uh, Baragan's uh, website. So you want to make sure that you have your, um, your dress appropriately. And you want to make sure that you have um, a pen, a paper. You want to make sure that you have an ID to verify you are who you say you are. 
You want to make sure that you have your portfolio ready. Um, when you bring your resume, you want to make sure that you bring several resumes um, because you may not know if you're interviewing with a panel or if you're interviewing by yourself. And a planned paper always goes a long ways too because you can note down any information that the employer lets you know or asks you. So you always want to make sure that you're ready and you have as much information as possible when going in to these interviews. If we go to the next slide. We also want to make sure that we're prepared for the most commonly asked questions when it comes to an interview. So there's a lot of simple questions that are asked during an interview that you can already pre-plan your answers for. And so if you get the chance, Google what are the top interview questions and quiz yourself. Have someone quiz you like, hey, I'm applying for this job. Can you quiz me as if I was in a resume? And have them read these questions and make sure you have prepared responses. And make sure that your responses always make you look very positively and make you look like a great worker. You never want to say something that makes you look bad or makes you gives the employer a negative taste of who you are. So uh, after this, the PowerPoint's gonna be available. I encourage you to read these questions or just Google them. Google the top 10 interview questions and you can practice. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that you're participating in the interview, that you're honest and you're giving complete answers. Your answers are concrete to the point. You make sure that you're always positive, like I said, about your answers and you avoid one word responses and that you limit the time of your responses. So you always want to make sure that you're not, you know, telling a long story, a long five minute story, but that you're giving concrete information that's making you look better, not information that's unnecessary, not talking bad about uh, your previous employer, but you're just talking positively about things that will make you look like a better applicant. If we go to the next slide, um, and then the really important follow up after the interview, if you can try to give yourself a 24 hour window, try to follow up that night. Send an email, thank you so much, state your appreciation, explain why you like the position, and just make sure you sound as enthusiastic about working for the company, explain how you liked everything um, from when you walked in the door. And uh, you know, allow them to see that morning your email so they can keep you in their head. And we could just close with that. Um, if we could just, um, with these steps now, you are now prepared to properly interview and be successful. So I wanna wish you the best on all your interview endeavors. And I wanna thank you guys for the opportunity. Thank you, Congresswoman, for the opportunity. And now we're gonna turn it over to uh, Congresswoman. Well, thank you, Joseph, for that. I wanna give another shout out to Vicky and to Joseph uh, from the Rancho Dominguez AJCC, America's Job Center of California for helping put the helping put this on and for all of your work on this as well. So um, I want to uh, thank everybody for joining us. And um, you should have received a link to your email uh, to provide us with feedback. We encourage you to be as honest as possible uh, with responses as it will help us prepare for future events. So please get the, sur you've got the survey and hopefully you're uh, filling that out. If you haven't done it yet, please do that. Um, I also wanna thank those of you who um, on the Q&A had questions during the workshop uh, with uh, uh, presenters most of the time, most of the questions we, we um, have asked for help and most of the times their questions have helped other people. Um, hopefully we got to all of those. If for some reason we, we didn't or there's something still unclear, please feel free to reach out. Okay, so again, thank you uh, for everybody. Don't forget about the survey. Um, I thought it was great. Vicki um, mentioned a grammar check, spell check. There's nothing that's worse than when I get a resume and there's a spell check and I say, geez, if they're on their best right now in reviewing and they haven't uh, caught this uh, spell check, then that's not a good start. So make sure that you're doing that. Um, our office is always looking for ways uh, to serve our constituents better. So please reach out if um, our office can help during this tough time. Um, thank you again to our fantastic presenters and employers for sharing your advice with us. We are extremely grateful to you. If you haven't gone to the website, please go to the website um you'll see some of the companies just to give you an idea that are on there that have jobs 
um, is we have home watchers, caregivers uh, for healthcare. We have Hyundai Motors America. They have jobs in sales. Um, the Salvation Army, Charles Drew, um, University of Medicine and Science has job openings for education, accounting, human resources. Um, so please take a look at the website um, and see if there's something that suits you so that you can apply and we can help connect you and get em you employed. And um, again, thank you. I want to remind everybody to stay safe out there. Please remember when you leave to wear your mask, uh, washing your hands often, practicing that physical distancing of six feet between you and others, whether you're at a grocery store or whether you're out taking a walk. Please, let's do that. Um, together, we're gonna get through this. Um, together, we can protect one another and help the most vulnerable. Uh, we will get through this tough time together. Again, my thanks to everybody. And one more time before we leave, let me give you the number, 310-831-1799. That's the phone number for our office. And thanks again to Joseph and to Vicki. Good luck everybody with that interview and hope the next time we meet up again, um, you have received the job that you've been trying to get. Bye everybody. Take care.